Um, well, I think um, uh, for most of human history, organic farming has fed the world. Uh, it's really only been in the last uh, 60, 70 years that uh, farming methods have changed to include regular uh, inputs that are uh, of fertilizer and pesticides that are based on fossil fuels. And, and most of the agricultural land around the world today is farmed using uh, agroecological uh, organic methods, uh, some quite successfully and in, in, in sustainable ways. In fact, some land you know, has been farmed for centuries. Um, the, 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 the question that, that always comes up is, well, given that population is growing and uh, people are earning more money in China and India and, and other countries, how, how is the demand for, for more food and, and more meat going to be met? Will it be uh, chemical intensive Western systems of, of agriculture? Uh, will it be uh, organic methods? Uh, will it, will Will we will we we be able to provide enough meat to 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 have uh, people in China have a hamburger every day like like in America? So, I mean, those are those are um, uh, obviously very important questions that that no one has the answers for. But I think it's it's uh, it's fair to say that the farming systems fifty years from now. Or they're going to look and work a lot more like a, a successfully managed uh, organic farm in America than uh, a chemical-based farm in, in the Midwest, uh, uh, simply because the, the fossil fuel-based inputs will, will not be available uh, and affordable to, to play the role that they, they have been. Um, how, how new technology will evolve and to what degree will different technologies be acceptable and, and incorporated in organic farming is a is a question that no one is uh, no one has the answers for. But I think that will uh, I, I think there will be um, uh, a trend uh, it, it towards more and more of the the science and technology development going on. Will be producing. Uh, new production inputs that are in fact uh, it will be acceptable to, to organic farmers. Uh, so I, I think the right now if you look at the, the toolkit that, that a conventional farmer has versus a, an organic farmer growing the same crop in the same region, in, in most cases the conventional toolkit is quite a bit bigger and there's a much greater diversity of, 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 of uh, different tools to address a, a given problem. But I think that's going to change over time and uh, I could easily see 50 years from now the relative sizes of the two toolkits will be reversed. There'll be relatively few of today's production inputs and technologies that are that are still useful, that are still allowed for use, that are still affordable, and there'll be a whole new set of, of uh, technologies and inputs that are available to farmers to uh, support uh, production. And, and I think if you look at the sort of the fundamental character of those tools, they'll be much more ecological in, uh, in, in, in and uh, they, they, will, they will be developed to meet a need within a system where, they're, where people have understood how some aspect of, of a farming system needs to be changed in, in order to bring out a to, to accomplish a, a goal of uh, avoiding pest losses, sustaining the fertility of the soil, um, assuring a, a, you know a, a good yields, uh, adequate pollination. There, there's many things that that have to happen um, in order for a, a, a farmer to to be successful at the end of the season and, and harvest a, a sound crop. And so I'm I'm um, I'm fairly optimistic that. Um, we will find ways to uh, uh, produce enough food. Uh, I, I don't think that we'll be able to uh, replicate the current Western and European diet in a planet with you know nine million people, nine billion people. I, 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 that's probably not going to be possible. But it's also wouldn't be terribly healthy for for those nine billion people. And 
I, I think um, and hope that other countries will uh, avoid some of the excesses in the in the Western and European diet. Uh, I think that 50 years from now, um, it, it's entirely possible that that beef cattle won't be the the major livestock species uh, feeding into the meat supply. I think it's much more likely that the that uh, more of the meat will come from small animals, uh, from chickens, from rabbits, from from fish, uh, from uh, a animals that can be raised on a much smaller scale, uh, utilizing um, crop waste and, and other resources in a in an area that uh, uh, you know, you know are, are available at, at, at an affordable price. So I think there 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 are there there of these many changes, more and more of them are are going to reflect and fit into a intensive ecological management of agricultural resources. Uh, and um, because of that, the, the general trend will be towards farming systems that, that look and behave and function a lot more like today's successfully managed organic farm than today's uh, specialized monoculture, large equipment, lots of fossil fuel inputs, uh, uh, type of agriculture. So, you know, will will organic farming you know, feed the world? Uh, it, probably, probably not, and and not completely. But I think we will move in that direction uh, because uh, of the the many benefits to to people, to to animals, to the land, to the environment that. Um, come from uh, approaching farming in that way. Well, uh, one of the, one of the in, in encouraging signs uh, as I read the, the literature and, and this evolving global debate about how will nine billion people in the world be fed in a more secure and healthy way. Uh, there, there, I think there is a consensus forming that the most important investment that the world community needs to make is in, is in restoring the fertility in uh, the soils in sub-Saharan sub Africa and Asia that are, that are worn out from, from too much pressure from population. The, the soils are depleted of nutrients, they are depleted of organic matter, they are plagued by a variety of, of chemical imbalances, too much zinc, too much magnesium, uh, uh, in some parts of the world too much arsenic, uh, and and they, they need to be healed uh, because with, without the, the base of a, of a fertile soil, uh, agriculture, agricultural production from those regions of the world will, will always be constrained, it will always cost a lot more, um, uh, and, and probably more than the, than than the relatively poor people in those regions can afford, and it will come uh, with very high environmental and public health costs because of the the chemical imbalances in, in the system, which are really a breeding ground for uh, pathogens, viruses, and, and other problems to to find a, a niche and, and and take off. So I, I think um, as as people and and international organizations and and political leaders uh, become convinced that we we've got to um, uh, return to the the long term task of building the fertility of the soil, the, the initiatives and actions that will be taken to move down that path will, will be very healthy for agriculture in general and, and, and people uh, served by the farmers in an area. Uh, and I'm, I'm really delighted to, to, to see that uh, uh, the world community is coming around to, to, recognize, to recognizing the, 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 the primary importance of building the soil compared to, for example, breeding a new variety of corn or a new variety of, of, um, uh, of carrots or sweet potatoes. Uh, sure, plant breeding ha has an important role to play, but uh, when you invest a lot of money in developing a new sweet potato variety, you're really only doing it for one region. And 
each of those varieties, whether it's sweet corn or wheat or, or grapes, uh, they typically uh, perform well for five years, a decade, at most a couple decades. And so it, it, you have to go back and redo that work and, and try to keep up with the, the changes in an agroecosystem. But investing in the soil, regardless of what is grown, whatever rotation, what, whatever diversity of crops, uh, a more fertile, healthy soil is going to produce more food of whatever is grown. And, and that's why people are coming to see that that's where the big investment opportunity is if we want to create the basis for higher levels of sustainable production that don't depend on levels of off-farm inputs and fossil fuels that, that are frankly not affordable. Not affordable for the people buying them and not affordable for the planet because of the greenhouse gas consequences. So, uh, you know, I. I I, I think that it's it, it is good that that there this recognition is is taking hold about the the preeminent importance of the soil. What the remaining question and what worries me and, and many other people is that there is a, a, a such a strong lock on the thinking of many people that the, the way to improve agriculture productivity is through uh, advanced technology, uh, genetically engineered seeds, uh, more synthetic chemical fertilizers, more pesticides. Uh, there's, there's a, a, it's hard to break the, the lock that that thinking has in the minds of, of, of many people and, and that, that's what worries me that, that that will be just very slow, hard, going um, and 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 but we'll we'll see how it plays out